Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about role playing games. And specifically, the topic for today is designing the ultimate Batman cave or Bat Cave for your adventures. If you're running like a superhero adventure or tabletop role playing game, that's really what I want to focus on for today. A little bit different to what I normally do, but I thought it was fun to, to, to contemplate the concept. And actually, there's not that much information out there um, as it happens, so I thought it was a good topic to go over. So some of the aspects and design factors that you might con consider is you're dealing with a cave. You're usually dealing with quite a large cave, so you're dealing with lots of exposed rock walls, uh, floors and ceilings. If you've got that tied into your cave, you're on the right track. That's just the beginning though, because Bruce Wayne Batman specializes in technology and building out the Bat Cave and having lots of different functions taking place. So we need to have the Bat Cave needs a lot of specialized environmental features, such as say a bat pole, if you're going to slide down to get there very quickly, uh, maybe a bat suit vault, uh, computers, and quite often we'll have multi-screen computer systems in place, elevators if we need to get back and forth fairly quickly because a bat pole will only go one way, it's down, it won't go back up. We have the chemistry laboratory where you can conduct your research that has to do with chemicals and gases and things like that. You have your, your Batmobile turntable so you can turn it round because the thing's probably quite long and so you need to be able to turn it easily. You're not going to be doing a three point turn in your bat cave more than likely. You have your, your bat boat launch ramp, you have your, uh, your bat hello pad, your bat rocket launcher pad, you have maybe a, a bat fusion reactor of some kind that generates power to power everything here. You maybe even have a bat laundry room. Ooh, I don't know, maybe. Uh, a workshop, probably going to have some sort of mechanical workshop because it has a lot of gear, a lot of equipment and a lot of vehicles to contend with. And more than likely because Batman gets beaten up quite a lot, is you're probably going to have a, a bat intensive care unit in your cave so you can deal with all those problems and injuries. Unless of course you're going really old school and going Rambo and just sewing it up with uh, needle and thread. Um, you're going to have a lot of vert vertical space, like vertical space in a bat cave is really important because it gives you different levels, lots of different platforms, the use of glass and concrete is quite common. Space in a cave can be quite low, can be quite narrow, but the, the spectacle of a bat cave is the fact that it is it's quite large so you need to give it a lot of height whether you have pits in it whether you have just a high ceiling it doesn't matter but lots of vertical space needs to be being used dark lights so that uh, you get that gothic feel and you don't give off too much light and potentially give off the the entrance to your cave unless of course you have a door that shuts and closes plenty of swarms of bats to populate your cave because the Batman hangs out with bats, that's that's the deal. Technology is integrated into the cave space, uh, so it appears like a science laboratory or um, workspace. So it's all about the science, really. Now, bat caves will store things like the bat signal light, your, your batmobile, your bat bike, your bat boat, your bat plane, your bat hello jet or helicopter, even bat cybernetics, because he's probably going to get worn out over time and he might need to use a few things to help him punch a wall really hard or kick something. A lot of battle armor will be involved as well, because Batman knows that he's going to get into a, a gunfight at some point, because everybody's got guns and eventually it winds up being laser pistols and things like that. Lots of high level technology, that's the, the, the theme behind a, a bat cave, is you've got high level technology in a space which is probably quite damp and wet and so you've got to make sure everything is made out of something that won't rust too quickly, really important to consider. Because it's the Batman and Batman is really really smart, he's going to include at least three entrances or exits to the bat cave that only he can access that are secret entrances. Now they may um, allow just a person to travel through or they might allow a vehicle to uh, escape or leave the, the bat cave. But three exits or entrances of some kind are going to be necessary. Probably something that uh, allows the, the flying vehicles to, to go through the roof section. Probably an elevator or a pole of some kind for allowing him to access it uh, by person. And then probably an opening big enough to allow the, 
the escape of or um, the traveling of a, a mobile such as a bike or a car or even a boat from the cave as well are probably going to be very important but I would say at least three entrances to consider. It's also going to be ridiculously expensive like let's say $360 million. It's going to be a high price tag to have something like this. Don't for forget your chambers are going to be more about large in size. So if you have multiple cham cham chambers, it's going to be large size chambers with a high ceiling, but more than likely you're dealing with open living space where you have a central hub and everything else uh, leads off to different areas and platforms where you do certain um, operations or functions, functions or you store certain types of equipment. Um, so open living is probably the, the one you want to go for because it gives you the, the impression of something vast and large and impressive. Now, that's what I have in terms of the design for a bat cave. I'm hoping this was useful to people, and if it was, fantastic. I want to say thank you to my patrons who support me on Patreon every week, and uh, for without you, I could not do this. I want to thank you for watching and listening to me. I also specifically want to thank Fred Hubber, who is a patron and a subscriber, for his ideas, who threw a whole bunch of ideas at me just before this live stream. And yes, Fred, I have included them. Thank you, F. Hubba. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.